Hello everybody, uh, this is Carlos Solis, owner of Pharmacist, Ridgepoint Medical Pharmacy and creator of the new business series called uh, Business Teaching Moments. And what I'm going to do today, um, I'm going to cover a couple of things in today's topic. One is I'm going to kind of go over teaching moment number 11 and then I'll lead into uh, teaching moment number 12 which is uh, uh, part of the series. And uh, in teaching moment number 11 we had talked about success and the different phases of achieving success. And one of the things that I had covered, which I want to kind of go into a bit more detail right now, is problem solving. I think while we're going through this journey that everybody goes through, which we had talked about, which is the struggle, everybody struggles, and there's always going to be those moments of darkness. I think everybody should kind of understand that in any successful venture, there are those days when questions come in, doubts come in, uh, the feelings of, you know, am I doing the right thing? Am I not doing the right things? Uh, are things that come up? But obviously we had discussed problem solving and let's talk about problem solving as it relates to your jobs. I think there's uh, four key questions that as we're going through the problem solving process that employees need to focus on. And probably the very first and most important question while we're doing our problem solving is what is the most frustrating part of my job? We really should be asking ourselves, what is the most frustrating part of my job? Once you've identified what that frustration is, then you can start taking steps to try to correct it. If obviously, it, if it requires you going to your supervisor to help you with that particular frustration, or in my case, coming to the ownership to help you resolve that frustration, then that is part of the problem solving process. The next thing is that while you're uh, in this journey of in your problem solving, while you're at work, the other next important question should be is, what am I trying to accomplish today? Very simple. What is it that I'm trying to get done in today's work? Of all the things that I have to do, what is it that I'm trying to get done? And the reason for that is as you're problem solving your frustration, and as you're problem solving your to-do list, then you're actually helping yourself kind of focus in on what you need to be doing while you're working. And then moving on beyond just the dealing with the daily activities is asking yourself the question, what can I do or what can be done to improve my job? And the reason why you ask these specific questions is because these questions help you solve problems. If you're, if you're always asking yourself the why question, many times the why question, like why am I doing this? You know, why am I frustrated? Those questions don't lead to answers, they tend to lead to more questions. So you need to be asking yourself very specific questions that help you drive your focus to helping you problem solve the situations that you're confronting each day. It could be that you need more training uh, as part of your problem solving. It could mean that you need a new system of workflow uh, that needs to be implemented. But these are the type of questions that come from asking yourself the question, what needs to be done or what can I do to improve my job? And most importantly, in, while you're going through this problem solving process is to ask yourself what have I tried that didn't work or what have I tried in the past that worked that I just maybe stopped doing so again all of these questions are to help empower you while you're at work and help you focus on getting the issues resolved so that was pretty much just an overview of uh, teaching moment number 11 and obviously the mindset that we had talked about comes from focusing in on the issues that need to be dealt with as your problem solving, uh, in this case here, your job environment. So let's move on to uh, teaching moment number 12. And in teaching moment number 12, one of the things that I'm going to kind of highlight today is what I've coined the autopilot syndrome. And, and what is the autopilot syndrome? Well, I'll get, that, I'll get into that in a second, but let's talk about goals for a second. 
whether we consciously or subconsciously uh, think about what we do while we're at work or at home, we either have a positive outcome during the day or a negative outcome. And the goals that we either consciously or unconsciously uh, perform each day uh, come from decisions that we make. As some people call it, the choices that we make. For example, if you know you need to have a good breakfast and you normally don't have time to do that, then the decision that you have to make, which is a choice obviously, is to get up maybe an extra 15 minutes early and get a good breakfast going. Now let's talk about actions. Actions are behaviors, right? Either we're going to fuss uh, about having to get up the extra 15 minutes early, or we're going to be determined. So what's your behavior when you know you have to get up an extra 15 minutes early? So your behavior related to the choices that you have obviously is determined by your behavior. If you don't want to get up the extra 15 minutes because you're sleepy, you're tired, you're not feeling well, or you just don't feel like doing it that day, then your behavior obviously will affect your ultimate choice. Now, and we were talking in uh, teaching moment number 11 about the compound effect. And the compound effect basically is just repeat action. And those repeat actions, which I talked about in teaching moment number 11, was the small, consistent decisions that you make every day end up becoming habits. So is your habit a good habit, or is your habit a bad habit? And obviously, your habits will ultimately lead to either positive outcomes or negative outcomes. So again, let's go over real quick the decisions, choices that we make daily, our behaviors, how do we respond to the decisions that we know we need to make? Are we being fussy about them or are we going to be determined on making sure that we implement something that's positive and constructive? And obviously if we repeat that action on a daily basis, it becomes either a positive habit or a negative habit. And with time, we'll have a compound effect. And the interesting thing about the compound effect, as we're going to discuss now, as we move into the autopilot syndrome, is the compound effect happens every single day whether you're aware of it or not. Now, the autopilot, which are the repeat actions, the habits that we have on a daily basis, lead to either positive outcomes or negative outcomes. And let's give you a real classic example. If you on a daily basis don't prepare yourself for the day to prepare good meals because you're always in a rush, and so you're always buying junk food because it's quick and simple. You can pick it up at any fast food store or at a convenience store. And so that's what you end up eating. And that becomes a bad habit. The compound effect eventually will either lead to several things. One obviously is uh, poor nutrition with potential uh, effects of you know eating poorly. And of course, the most common visible effect is becoming overweight. So the autopilot syndrome is that every single day, whether we realize it or not, we are creating habits that either lead towards progressive positive outcomes or negative bad outcomes. And to give you an example of, of the uh, auto syndrome, I'd like to talk about bicycle riding uh, for the moment. When we try to initially learn how to ride a bike, as we all know the first thing that happens when you get on the bike is, is you try to get on it and balance yourself, you fall off or you fall down or you fall to the side unless you have somebody helping you to keep you upright. And the issue that comes here from the autopilot syndrome is that when you first ride a bike, you're not on autopilot syndrome. You have to consciously get your hands on the handlebars, put your leg over the seat, put your one foot on one of the pedals and, and, and be very focused and conscientious of every single movement that you make in order to try to ride the bike. You keep repeating that behavior, right? The action of attempting to get on the bike. Everything is a conscious effort because you're struggling. You're having to be aware that if you're not really paying attention to what you're doing, you're going to fall down again. As you continue your habit, over time, you will eventually start going a little bit further without falling. You go from maybe going a few feet to a few yards to eventually maybe going the entire length of a street. And before you know it, you're able to do it without any help. 
Now, once you've mastered riding the bike is when the autopilot syndrome kicks in. The autopilot syndrome is you get on the bike and don't even realize it. You put your hands on the, on, the, on the handlebars, you put one of your feet on one of the pedals, and you push forward and you take off riding the bike. Now, while you're riding the bike, you're not having to think about, am I balancing myself properly? Am I leaning too far to the left or too far to the right? It becomes autopilot. You just get on the bike and you're riding it. Your body has mastered all the different activities related to riding the bike, and you go into autopilot syndrome. Now that becomes a positive autopilot, right? You've mastered the bike and now you're enjoying the bike and you're able to maybe pick off your hands off the handlebars, you're able to wave at people, and all of that comes from because your body has mastered the basic functions of riding the bike and allows your subconscious mind to do the, the routine, mundane activities of riding the bike while your conscious mind now can be focused on enjoying the bike ride, enjoying the wind against your face, enjoying waving at your friends, um, because the autopilot syndrome here provided you with a positive compound effect. Now your body has gone into autopilot, which is a good thing. The thing that happens though in work environments is that we unfortunately can possibly go into an autopilot syndrome where we've established bad habits. We come to work, we complain, we're frustrated, um, we have issues that we can't solve, and so we ignore them, and they become compounded over time. The frustration builds daily, you're more frustrated, uh, you're not accomplishing any goals, you're just waiting for the day to end so you can get home and forget about the day's circumstances. So you go into an autopilot syndrome of bad habits. So the, the take-home take message is autopilot syndrome can be a very positive thing for you because it can have compound effects that can be really positive for you or the autopilot syndrome can be very negative for you because the compound effect will continue even if you're into, uh, in the autopilot syndrome. So when you're at work, focus in on what you're doing. Ask yourself those four questions. What's most frustrating about my job? What can I do to improve my job? What can I do to um, actually um, meet my goals for that day? So keep all those things in mind and let's prosper together.